Hey, what's up, my beautiful peeps? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Give the Sense 92, giving you guys the latest and exclusive content on your music, entertainment news, and inspirational posts by me, your show queen. It's back. And guys, it's been a minute for the artist di- diaries from the girl, right? Oh, she deserves her flowers because I don't care. I'm going to say what I got to say because Carrie Hilson, period. Miss Carrie, baby. Yes, she is going to have her artist diaries. And, you know, I personally have always felt Carrie Hilson talented, beautiful, you know, just that really, she is very successful. You know, she has longevity. Not only that, she really broke the cycle of becoming another successful black female artist, really navigating to the music industry and, you know, breaking barriers. And I'm going to dive deep into it. I'm going to get blunt, you know, and I, I'm going to, I don't care. This video is a Carrie Hilson tribute. So, you know, I feel like it's time. But I also feel like Carrie Hilson is underrated in ways, and she is. But, like I said, she pretty much is legendary and iconic. So, I'm going to run down all the hit records. And I will dive deep into Carrie Hilson's music career. Dive into, you know, like I said, her huge success. And then, you know, the controversy. And then, you know, haters. And then, like I said, you know, seems like she's the bad guy, you know. But overall, you guys will get my drift at the end of this video. So, with that being said, grab your popcorn, grab your seats. It's been a minute since I did an artist diaries. And I'm going to really, really kick butt with these artist diaries, little mini documentaries, mini biographies, because I feel like it took a while for me to be like, okay, now it's time to get back at it again. All right, so let's get pop, shall we? So, she has hit records, Turn Me On, featuring Lil Wayne, Knock You Down, featuring Kanye West. Energy, lose control, make love, number one, slow down, one night stand featuring Chris Brown, return the favor, the way you love me featuring Rick Ross, change me, make love, I like, the way I are featuring Timberland. And I feel like actually return the favor, I feel like that was a feature. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just kind of scan through real real quick because i feel like that's another uh collaboration that she did with another artist but let me just check real 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 quick it ain't gonna take that long yeah featuring timbaland yeah return the favor featuring timbaland so like i said miss carrie baby got hits under her belt as a featured artist and i'm gonna just really say this she is pretty much, I'll say this, when Carrie Hilson came out, I was in the 11th grade. And when I heard Turning Me On featuring Lil Wayne, it was something about Carrie Hilson, the way how she came through with a bang. She came out with her debut album, In a Perfect World. And I feel like Carrie Hilson pretty much hit the ballpark swinging with her debut album, In a Perfect World. And that's pretty much her debut album where she knew that she was not just a songwriter because Carrie Hilson has amazing pen game. She has wrote artists, you know, for um, Beyonce. um, I I know she worked like Neo, Archer, um, Chris Brown, you know, uh, Paulo the Dawn. Yes. And he's another dope music producer that I like his sound. I feel like Paulo the Dawn is a very musical genius because her sound pretty much really carved a new enigma in R&B pop soul music but she had found like more like that pop electronica sound for her and it worked very well for her she's pretty much like a her as a vocalist she's pretty much like in between like a powerhouse vocalist but her whole entire artistry Carrie Hilson pretty much made sure she knew it was her time to shine, which is nothing wrong. 
because behind the scenes, you know, like I say, we, we've had, you know, like I said, she pretty much worked, have been in the music industry for a while. She came from hum humble beginnings in what, Georgia? So, you know, went to school and stuff like that. But she knew that she was going to really bring something different, that nostalgia. So, when I heard Turning Me On featuring Lil Wayne, and I remember sitting in the den in my in an apartment. The way how that record is a classic instant hit, hands down. You can still play that record. It still bumps. It still got that um. It still is like swag out, bang out. It's like she came through with turning me on. There was nothing like that song. There was like this like really like. It had like that upbeat dance kind of techno electronica music, and but it was mixed with R and B and soul, and Polo the Don. Like, out of respect, Carrie Hilson, that record she made that record her own record, and like I said, you know how she even said, you know she, you know, coming to the games of black woman, she's like female artists, like yo, I know I can do it, you know, put respect in my name. I don't feel like Carrie Hilson had this, like, you know how it, I'm going to get into that a little bit later. This is March, a little bit later. But she had that confidence. Like, she had that real, like, swagged out, like, you know, represent for the women. And it just was like femininity and just being bossed up and being, it's like, it's like that mean mug kind of record. So when I heard that record, turning me on, turning me, and then that part, damn, Davis, give it to him. I'm like, that, that kind of gave me like that really marching kind of empowerment, like a sorority kind of type. And I was like, this chick really is freaking amazing. Like she pretty much really found a sound for her. And then Lil Wayne, the collaboration, the feature, how he actually, you know, he's pretty much like I said, one of the best of his generation. But that chemistry, and how like he the bar for bars you know rapping and i feel like this is the reason why with carrie hilson people had tried to clown her even years ago a little bit but no carrie hilson she knew she was going for the snatch excuse me for my cursing i curse so i'm trying not to curse too much but i, I apologize but no 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 when it comes down to really coming through out the gate, out the woodwork, and especially with a new sound music, because even years ago, like 2010, I would say she came out like 2009-ish in a way. Yeah, she came out 2009, I believe 2019. So Carrie Hilson pretty much, the music years ago was more R&B, soul pop, but it was like the mainstream was more like techno and it was more like, like rhythm and blues. Mainstream was, was starting to get more like techno and dance and a little bit of that like electronic music sound. But Carrie Hilson, her signature sound, her signature style, the way how she sang, you know, she's a powerhouse vocalist. And then the hits kept coming, you know, uh, even uh, Knock You Down featuring Kanye West. She even worked with another talented rapper, Kanye West. And he's another iconic, legendary rapper of his generation. So knock you down knock you down it's like and she also had like that like really upbeat up tempo kind of music and it worked really well with her and then it was um let's see her collaborations with the way i are featuring timbaland and return the favor uh featuring uh timbaland so she also worked with timbaland too so karen hilson wasn't just like you know she was one of those up and coming musicians she's a musician she was on the rise she knew she was like oh wow i'm i'm pretty much getting ready to be the next huge big thing in music and like i said you know she um like i said in the perfect world pretty much was like everywhere like she pretty much was like another talented sister in music really you can coexist with your peers and it was nothing wrong with it and she, like her fans really supported her you know and I personally wasn't a huge fan at first. Um, I, I kind of was a little bit like, you know, I had to really, like, so I was like, okay, who's this chick that I was interested? You know, like, okay, cool. But no, she caught me off guard. She was really, really talented. 
And the only thing that really, 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 really was bothering me, and I'm going to get to that controversial, but like I said, the turning me on record, that was a little bit controversial about that record, but we'll, we'll, um, we're going to, don't worry, we'll get to it later. Then she um put out her second album, um No Boys Allowed, and that was what, um the follow-up sophomore album. So that album was more like edgier, you know, she was tapping to more of like that hip-hop, electronica sound. She also was doing more of like that R&B soul, social sound too. So she worked with uh, like Rick Ross, Chris Brown, Chris Brown, One Night Stands, another um, classic hit, R&B, slow jam, nice, you know, rhythm and blues, nostalgia, sexy sound. And then it's another uh, record called The Way You Love Me, featuring Rick Ross. It's more edgier, it's more grittier, it's more sexy, it's more like natural sex appeal. And I think that Carrie Hilson, what I love about her is that she just was being her. You know, she wasn't trying too hard. She was just being authentic. And she has that natural beauty. She has that natural beauty and also that musical genius that she has. She can write records. She literally has a great pen game. And I can tell that she had studied music and she write her records. And she actually, when she wrote her records, she said, from my personal experiences as a woman, writing, being creative, tapping into my creative juices, you know, just she's more like a a musician where people was another one people don't want to give her her credit. Like people don't want to give her credit was it. And I feel like even like I said, with two successful albums and not just those two successful albums, but back to back hits, because as I run down the list of her hit songs and the collaborations, I mean Lil Wayne, Kanye West, Chris Brown, Rick Ross, Timbaland, you know, and out of respect, you know, they did their thing. And her as a woman, like she represented for the ladies, you know, so of course, ladies first, right? So it was really, really amazing to see her really, really elevate, really push further in her music career. She just had, she just, it was just something unique, something different. And what I mean by that, her sound to me is like a mixture of traditional R&B, rhythm and blues mixed with pop and i would say more of like that pop r&b soul dance but what she really did was when she found like that electronica sound and she told it she said look i was pretty much creating something that was never done before now i'm gonna really now this is really gonna get interesting and people can have their opinions i may ruffle some feathers that's fine I'm really, like I said, I'm not here to force people's opinions down their throat. That's just not who I am. But I have to be honest. Controversial, controversy, and controversy and drama also led Carrie Hilson into this limbo of this space and, you know, went into a hiatus in the music industry for a while and went into a depression and the bullying and the dragging and the uh her being public number one enemy to a certain fan base the beehive beyonce fans now um viewers discretion is, is advised i'm not going like i said this is my personal opinion this is my perspective and like i said i love beyonce's music but wrong is wrong period wrong is wrong period but anyway there has been, there was this riff, and I even witnessed it too when I was younger, and I said, oh my goodness. Carrie Hilson, you know, it's like public enemy number one. There's pretty much an eternity on record, a line, the controversial line that allegedly was disrespectful to Beyonce. Now, from Carrie Hilson's perspective and viewpoint, I can't speak for Carrie Hilson. So I'm out of respect for Carrie Hilson. I cannot speak for her. But I will say this. It just got out of hand. It got into a frenzy. You know, and the Beehive had been notorious for coming at, you know, talented, successful female black women besides Beyonce. Carrie Hilson was just already just doing her thing. She already has a land of her own. Like, pretty much there she put the groundwork. She hit the pavement like everybody else. And I think that 
it was really aggravating and sad to see another talented black female woman always getting compared to Bay. And really, as I look back on it, it's really cringeworthy, if you ask me. Don't you think? I mean, being compared to Beyonce is not necessary. It's just not necessary. It's like, it's irrelevant at this point. But in Carrie Hilson's case, she really was the bad guy in the beehive, in the beehive eyes. So I let that, let it marinate. That's just what it was. She pretty much was like, you know, getting dragged, getting picked on, dragged through the mud, blah, blah, blah. And even behind the scenes, it was like, and there's a new video now up and coming video. I don't even remember the name of the video. I, I know, I don't even know the um, YouTube channel's name, but I watched an interview and I said, Dag, Dag, D A M N, Jesus, take the will. Golly. And she said behind the scenes, man, she said, yeah. Quote citation, because I give credit where it's due. She said, you know, when you buck, they buck harder. Which I have empathy for her because I feel like things had got it out of hand at that point. And I don't really feel, like I said, I feel like Carrie Hilson's top tier artistry for herself, just like anyone else. Just like she pretty much was like, listen, I'm pretty much doing me, you know, and, and just like, hell, okay, you, you hear like, Female musicians, they, you know, have confidence and they say what they want to say in their records. But then Carrie Hilson is like, uh, uh, well, well, you, you know, her beehive can get sometimes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, they just, they, they, they just was like, I'm just being, I, I'm going to be humorous. But it's like that, like screaming white girl, like, oh my god, like, oh my goodness, oh my god, that's how they was acting, and I'm like, it ain't really that bad if you ask me. It ain't like she just took somebody and just threw them on the pavement, or she just took somebody and stole somebody's car, or she took somebody and just whatever. But no, they just went into a freaking frenzy. They was like, well, Carrie Hilson is not better than Beyonce. Being Carrie Hilson is not better than Beyonce. And view discretion is the vice period. I'm just speaking from my perspective as a witness what I saw. And this is not a video to bash Beyonce. And this is not. I just don't like her ignorant things at times, period. And that's it. And I will never tolerate it. But anyway, carry on, period. Citation. <sighs> but yeah, Carrie Hilson, definitely, like I said, you know, she held down the fort. But it was so sad because she said, you know, even have a successful music career comes through with the territory. And for Carrie Hilson to really, 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 you know, become like, I feel like she's one of the underdogs. And she's still successful. She still is beautiful, you know. And she really, like I said, it's not like she never was talented. It's not like she never was successful. And it's not like she was never, like, you know. But, no, Carrie Hilson's icon legendary. Because, really, her artistry, she even really, with her R&B slow, nice, sexy jams, she really, like, carved away for the R&B soul department. You know, and she really, and it's like that versatile and that chameleon that she is as an artist, I feel she paved the way for many talented artists to really find a sound, a lane, a direction. And, you know, what makes you stand out? It's okay to tap to different artistries. I feel like her experimenting with her music, that's what made her stand out. I feel like when she tapped to like that, like army, soul, pop, electronica music, and it had like that techno electronic or that dance upbeat. Like her sound kind of has a little bit like that 80s kind of sound, like that retro army pop music where the black artists they tap into like like you know the 80s 
the eighties era of music, like R and B, black soul music. Um, they tap more into like that R and B pop techno music, and it worked well for her. And like I said, her voice, her singing, she can sing well. She sang on beat live. So as a live vocalist, she didn't even need to have no auto tune. It sounded really right. She had the voice. She had the range, her tone. So she was really, really able to really knock it out the ballpark. And I feel like with In a Perfect World and No Voice Allowed, Carrie Hilson pretty much certified herself as, you know, one of these musicians that she really just is a game changer, you know, and she wasn't pretty much, she didn't feel like she had to be put in the box to, you know, sell her records. She didn't feel like she had to just, she wanted to be herself. Like she just wanted to just not just be herself, but being authentic. And it was okay to be experimental. That's the reason why, really, I feel like Carrie Hilson, you know, her haters and like I said, naysayers, it's like music is supposed to be diverse. And really for black women artists, and I always talk about this, I don't care. I will say this. Good music is good music, whatever, your, you know, your taste is. Um, and black women, female artists, they shouldn't be always happy put to like this high, 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 high pedestal in the music industry world. That if they're not like so and so, or they're not like so and so, then they're not even gonna give. They're not gonna shoot. Be honest, they ain't gonna get no nothing but cookie crumbs, or you know, they ain't gonna really get further than music careers. And I'm not, I'm not starting nothing. But I've had, I've seen some stuff, a history of some things. Um, if you're interested, I did a video about uh, my. There's no such thing as the next Bay Re Nikki. My thoughts. Go check that out. Carrie Hilson pretty much fought under that bracket, but she is has always been the next Carrie Hilson period, next Miss Carrie Baby period, and a legendary and iconic uh, musician. And like I said, she really, like I said, Carrie Hilson is pretty much one of those talented black female musicians. I feel like people tend to forget. They they do tend to forget. It's like years ago it was like it was more of a euphoria kind of sound so carrie hilson pretty much she found that euphoria in her music and her her you know production and she she really stuck to her creative juices her you know like artistry she didn't sell out you know just to make music she just really is authentic and to be her to have that gift to tap into different sounds of music and to really, you know, be a songwriter. And she even helped artists get themselves in the door. And she, like I said, she didn't really have this like, well, no one can't know, you know, do anything. You know, I can't do anything. She was like, yo, okay, I don't mind writing records for people. She get, and I'm pretty sure she got, you know, paid, you know, good amount of money writing songs for people. And there's not no telling also, even on the business aspect, ain't no telling what she went through on the business aspect, because let's be positive, but as a songwriter, she has been, you know, she been putting in their work. And sometimes they're like, you know, where songwriters, they also go through things in the music industry where, you know, they don't really get their dues, you know, fully paid. But Carrie Hilson, to me, Carrie Hilson is like, yo, one of a kind musician. Um, I feel like, you know, really people, they really, really, really underestimated her. They really did. Even in the music climate of mainstream, for her to really have those hits rolling back to back, it's just like, in her stage presence, oh, I got to talk about her stage presence. Her live stage her performances, she can sing and dance at the same time. Her choreography you know, it was in, in like eccentric. It just had like that technical dancing and singing. And I feel like, like even with the songs like Turning Me On for Army Feet, Knock You Down for Army Feet, um, The Way You Love Me for Army Feet, um, you know, the, what's the name of that? Mm. Okay, so it's like she literally pretty much what I liked about her choreography is that she gave me an essence of Janet and Michael out of respect but she had that like really slow movement choreography where like 
she was fluid and then she was aggressive. And I think that that's what also made her stand out. Her dancers, the background dancers, beautiful, hands down. They really, I feel like even with her as an old, like a well-rounded musician, um, I think that she, you know, really tapped into that artist development. That's why pretty much she pretty much hit everything out the freaking ballpark, you know, with the In the Perfect World dating out. And it takes a lot to really find yourself, find your core audience, and it worked well for her. Um, and I feel like, you know, she definitely made sure. Yeah, she made sure. Yeah, Carrie Hilson, it was time for Carrie Hilson to really, you know, change the game in music. Um, and No Boys Allowed, she topped that off for her sophomore album. It was very successful. Oh, Pretty Girl Rock. I cannot leave that. Pretty Girl Rock. My name is Carrie. Blah, 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 blah. Da, 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 da. That's another one of my favorite Carrie Hilson songs. And, and Pretty Girl Rock, that sound is such another classic hit from her because, you know, it just has like that army, sultry pop dynamic. Um, and really, I love how she paid homage to women like Janet Jackson and TLC, um, Josephine Baker. Carrie Hilson pretty much, like I said, she did her homework. She studied, but that's the thing. That song, Pretty Girl Rock, is pretty much uplifting, empowering. Like, oh, you know, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. That line's like, I don't, she's like, okay, I'm on the inside. What's on the inside? It makes me glow. It makes me who I am, whether you like it or not. So I feel like Carrie Hilson pretty much really, for her, Miss Carrie, baby, girl, you deserve it all, period. You deserve your flowers. And I really am excited to see and hear more from Carrie Hilson. She also branded herself, you know, in acting, you know, movies on Lifetime and stuff. So she really has, like I say, you know, that music industry is full of crime. But she has persevered and pushed through. But she deserves to create more music. I feel like people are ready for her to come back into the music world. And she deserves it. Because, like I said, you know, when it comes down to it, I think that music, you know, for black women artists, we're just going to have to really hold down the fort for them. Um, and I will continue to make videos like this because I feel like it's really interesting. It's it's really cool to even go back and look back on Carrie Hilson's, you know, rise to superstardom and fame, you know, just that, that natural bona fide talent that she is. You know, she didn't sell her soul to get where she's at. She made sure that she was going to make sure she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm about to really come through. And she did. So with that being said, um, guys, um, Carrie Hilson fans, longtime Carrie Hilson fans, what are your thoughts? What are your opinions? You know, how you guys feel? Let your girl down below. It was time, y'all, for me to do another, 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 another The Artist Diaries. And I really, really, really thank goodness I had the freaking opportunity and the time because I've been busy. But this video, y'all deserve another The Artist Diaries. And like I said, um, before I close out, uh, Carrie Hilson, we love you. Keep doing your thing, queen. Um, like I said, you're pretty much like one of a kind, legendary, iconic trailblazer in music um and you know like i said we just need to hear from you in music so come back little come back um because i've heard like i said this articles a little bit here and there that she's you know working on new music well that being said this wraps up my the artist diaries carrie hilson um so with that being said guys share your thoughts and your opinions stay tuned in the next episode of since 92 like share comment subscribe down below Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification button. And as always, stay tuned for next episode of Give Sense 92, Dragon Ball Z Nary Reference. Peace. Bye-bye. Your girl's ending out. The Super Saiyan's out.